It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Denver Broncos coming up next. We find ourselves at the foot of the Rockies, Denver, Colorado, for this edition of the NFL on EA Sports. But today, two AFC teams set to do battle. It should be a good one, as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the Denver Broncos. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and as we look at this matchup, Every time there's something different to focus on. So I'll just ask you, what do you see here in this one? Well, Rembrandt, you've given me a pretty blank canvas to focus on, haven't you? Yes. Where do you think I'm going to go with this? Oh, secondary? <laughs> you know me. You know me well, right? In a game like this, it's always about the secondary. Can they handle the passing attack and make a few plays? Braxton Berrios selected to bring it out. And he returns this to the 22. The Dolphins take the field with Tua Tungavailoa, their quarterback from Alabama, at the helm. Every time he leads his team out, there's no questioning. He's put the work in to earn his place in the NFL. There's no shortage of stories we've heard throughout his career about the effort he puts in to be in this spot. And that motivates everybody on his team. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Here now, second and four. Throwing now is Tugavailoa. He'll get this into the hands of Braxton Berrios. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Just need a yard here. Second and one. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Open man downfield is Hill. It's a big play there for Miami, 44 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Over the middle, he gets it to Barrios. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. A gain of eight brings up second and goal at the one yard line. Mostert diving for the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown. A 
everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. And that makes it 7-0 Dolphins. So the drive there took six plays. And it was capped off by a touchdown run from Raheem Mostert. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Stidham sets to throw on first. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And oh, he spins past him and into space. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. Defense gets up a touchdown on the opening drive. Offense, you got to get out there and get those points back right now. And that's a sharp throw there to get this drive off to a good start. The first carry now. This is Williams. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter about to begin from Denver. It's the Broncos in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Stidham. And that is incomplete. Now the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit. Even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. From midfield now, here's Stidham. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. I will see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Here's Stidham to throw. It's Williams on the catch. And they will get this across midfield, but still well short of the first as he's dropped at the 46. Five yards, not enough, and it'll be fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So Miami coming out for their second drive. 
We have to be thrilled with that first drive. They got him the touchdown. Now they'll be looking to make it a two-score advantage here on the road. And you know they spent all week in practice, in meetings, talking about taking an early advantage. Being the road team, going up a score, that takes the crowd out of the game and puts some doubt in the minds of their opponents. Could not have thrown that out there any better. When the ball hit the ground, I thought it might go into the end zone the way it was angling, but perfectly jutting out at the one. You think maybe what we saw in practice came into play there? You know, he put those big cans down on the sideline and then angled for him and, and, and shot for him. Looks like it worked out pretty well for him, too. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. Now second and five. Two are going to throw. It's Hill, complete. And this is going to double their room to maneuver, able to get it from the 5 to the 10-yard line. And the side of the run of really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Tug of Ilo are going to try and throw on third down. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Two and a Tyreek for the Miami first. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. They complete it to Hill. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. This second and four. Two and a throw again. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defense. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Well, as my dad would say sometimes, I'm just scratching my head here trying to figure out what was going on there defensively. How did you lose him in the middle of the field? If you're going to lose a receiver, make sure it's someone on the short side of things, not deep downfield, that can hurt your defense. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. They'll swing this out wide. Here's Achan. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second down and a little more than a yard here. And again, it's Tunga Vailoa. He'll dump this off to Achan. And they are going to have a first down, and they're in field goal range as well as they're down inside the 20. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? 
Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and 10. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Now a second and six. Now Tua. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion for him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, a 31-yard attempt. Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add onto their lead. So another scoring drive there, Charles, and an early two-score lead. You'd like the six there, partner, but you'll take the three, and I think they have to be happy about the way they moved the ball in these first two drives. They have to feel good about their opportunities the rest of the game. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we have reached halftime with our score 10-0. As now we send you out to Orlando and hook back up with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you too in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Raheem Mostert, the veteran who did some damage in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Nothing is our score as we get started again on EA Sports. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Out of the gun, Stidham. A quick throw there is incomplete. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw is Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. 
He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Here's Barrios. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Two in the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Tug of Iloa working out of the gun. He'll swing this out to Moster. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. On second down, Mostert. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Those are the plays this defense needs with the deficit they're facing. It certainly is, and they've got to continue to swarm the football and hope that someone, while they're holding up the ball carrier, can get in there and rake it and lock it free. They need to get some takeaways as well. They'll try and run here with Moster. He's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. He'll send this one into the mile high air, and it's a good one. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Well, the football going back over to the Denver Broncos. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag, punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that. In and shedding the tackle, and now some room. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now Stidham. That's caught left side by Judy. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. On second down, here's Stidham. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. We just saw another example of really good defensive football, which has led to the cushion that they have in this game. Got to him once again, knocked him on the ground, forced an incompletion. Yeah, they've set the tone. It's one thing to set the tone, another to come in here on the road and set the tone. Now it's Stidham. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. Looks like another empty possession offensively. And you're at that point in the game where you can't afford too many more of these. So this is going to require some heavy thinking on the sideline to figure out what they can do to crack this defense. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. 
Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Miami's offense set and ready to go. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Now a throw here to his running back. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Holding offense. So they will tread backward on the holding penalty. And I know that they're going to get coached up and they'll get yelled out a little bit, but let's face it, it is hard not to do at the speed and pace that they play. On play action, here's Tua. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in, because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. On second down, a run by a champ. And he's got Rome. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now to Denver. It's Dolphin football. It's also Dolphin lead to begin quarter number four. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield to the 40 now for first and 10. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he's taken down inside the 30. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. Two and now on first down. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. Second and ten. Now Tua on the bootleg here. And that is caught. Touchdown Miami. Tyreek Hill on the touchdown pass from Tua. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from making this a three-score game. An important score there, CD, and now an important extra point because it would make it a three-score game. Love the math there. And at this point in the fourth quarter, look, we all need next-gen stats, right? We all use them. But we don't need them here, do we? Because that means it's almost a certain victory. Sanders now to add the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. That time, a six-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill.
Jason Sanders. Is now after the touchdown, water. ready to kick it away is Sanders. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. And Denver getting set to take the field. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets a made. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored him, and that time worked well for a solid gain. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And they will get him down, but not before he gets very good yardage there, as that will lead us right into the two minute warning. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. On first and 10, it's Stidham. And he's going to drop this off to Williams, complete. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Stidham's throw taken in here by Patrick. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 17 yards on the play as they try to eat into this 17-point deficit. I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So the completion good for seven there, and it's second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Again, Stidham. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Patrick. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Here's Stidham to throw. He'll find Sutton on the right side complete. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Throwing again here, Stidham. Touchdown, Broncos! Jerry Judy from three yards out. And the Broncos are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. 
I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, I guess offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't feel right. Exactly. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Dolphins are indeed going to get this, and that should all but do it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Dolphins offense returning to the field and checking the timeouts. They do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Down to an ego's Tua, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. This one angles out of bounds in a good spot in the coffin corner. And they're going to mark this out of the five-yard line. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL 